water. Water, the most common substance on Earth. It is with us every moment of our lives. But do we know the secrets of this amazing element? Where did it come from? Who bestowed water on our planet? And why? the only such planet in the universe. Perhaps only water itself knows the answers to these questions. There is just as much water on Earth today as there was when everything began. When the world was born and acquired the shape and sensations we know so well. So what we did was what we always do here, do very careful work in a narrow field. So we said, let us focus on water, but we will look at it from many angles. Any substance contracts when it is cooled, but water does the opposite. It expands. That's why a plant shoot can break through asphalt with ease. Every one of water's properties is unique, and they do not easily fit into the generally accepted laws of physics. Science has not yet been able to answer the question of why water is the only substance on the planet that can exist in three states, liquid, solid, and gaseous. Southeast Asia. The year is 1956. The place is a secret military laboratory for developing and producing weapons of mass destruction. Work has been underway here for several years on a powerful new generation of bacteriological weapon. The scientists are discussing what properties this weapon should have at one of their protracted secret meetings. Suddenly, the session breaks off. All of the participants are taken to the hospital with symptoms of severe food poisoning. An investigation into what happened quickly hits a dead end. The scientists had consumed nothing except water from the carafes on their table. The water was tested. No harmful additives were found. Its chemical composition was H2O. And that's what the report said. Poisoning caused by ordinary water. Twenty years later, a fantastic hypothesis was put forward. A hypothesis that could explain water's unpredictable behavior. Water has memory. Experiments done in many countries around the world have shown that water receives and makes an imprint of any outside influence, remembering everything that occurs in the space that surrounds it. Any substance coming into contact with water leaves a trace in the water. Had our ancestors guessed this when they used silver vessels to turn ordinary water into healing water? It is today the best antibiotic that is made as good in Afghanistan and Iraq. The American army uses this water, one atom per hundred million to kill all the germs in a wound. So the President of the United States uses this water to keep infectious uh, bugs from his hand. So I said, how can this water be? As it records information, water acquires new properties, yet its chemical composition remains unchanged. So their theory was the chemical composition of the water is important. Now the sensational news is that that is nonsense. The structure of water is much more important than the chemical composition. The structure of water means how its molecules are organized. We can see how water molecules join together into groups. 
These are called clusters. Scientists came up with the idea that these clusters work as memory cells of a certain sort, in which water records the whole history of its relationship with the world, as if on magnetic tape. People don't think when you turn on the light, the water is changing. When you turn on the electric field from the power lines, the water may change. So that is the direction of research. The water, of course, remains water, but its structure, like a nervous system, reacts to any irritation. Modern instruments have made it possible to record the fact that within each of water's memory cells, there are 440,000 information panels, each of which is responsible for its own type of interaction with the environment. If you consider a cluster as a group of specific molecules, um, then it can survive only a short amount of time. But if you consider it as a structure whereby molecules can leave and other molecules come in, the cluster can last effectively for a very long time. The stability of the cluster structures confirm the hypothesis that water is capable of recording and storing information. It may be the single most malleable computer, which can, it's like a computer memory. It's the memory of information. We must know how it is arranged. It is like the alphabet. If I give you the alphabet, you don't know a word, you don't know a letter, you don't know a sentence. So the molecular structure is the alphabet of water and you must make a sentence out of water, and you can change the sentence. We have carried out many experiments on the effect that quite diverse factors have on samples of water. Magnetic fields, electrical fields, various objects, and also including a human presence and human emotions. And it became clear that positive and negative human emotions are the strongest element of influence. Professor Korotkov's laboratory has conducted numerous experiments on the effect of human emotions on water. A group of people were asked to project onto a flask of water in front of them very positive emotions like love, tenderness, and concern. Then, the flask was replaced with another one, and the people were asked to project emotions of a different type. Fear, aggression, hatred. After this, Measurements were taken on the samples. The water exhibited changes that were clearly in one direction or another. So love increases water's energy levels and stabilizes the water, while aggressive emotions reduce the energy and make radical changes in the water. I hope to show people through my research that water has a memory of its own. Dr. Emoto's laboratory does research on water samples, which are subjected to various forms of outside influence. The impressions made upon the water are recorded by swiftly freezing it in a cryogenic chamber. This is what water heated in a microwave oven looks like. This is the effect of a mobile telephone. Somebody said thank you to this water. Excuse me. You disgust me. With modern technology, it is possible to structurize water artificially. When seeds were grown under laboratory conditions using this kind of water, the soy sprouts had six times greater photon radiation than when ordinary water was used. Using structurized water makes vegetables ripen faster and increases the amount of useful microelements and vegetable proteins several fold. If we look at the shoots, the treated ones were long, even, and strong, while the untreated ones were short, thin, and weak. If we look at the plants today, those from the selected seeds have all ripened, but the ones from non-selected seeds have not. We have to say that using structurized water really does affect the growth of vegetables and fruits. 
For the purposes of irrigation, 20% less of this type of water is needed than when using ordinary water. No fertilizer was added to the soil or the water. The chemical composition remained the same, H2O. The only thing that had changed was its structure. At the present time, scientists can answer the question of how this happens, but science does not yet have an answer to the question of why. Depending on age, a human being is made up of 70 to 90 percent water. An adult drinks approximately 2.5 liters of water each day in order to sustain his normal life functions. Another 1.5 liters is absorbed through the skin during bathing or showering. Water makes a long and difficult journey before arriving in our homes. It used to be common knowledge that a settlement could only occur where there was a natural source of water. Today, whether or not there is water in a place is of no importance because we transport water for thousands of miles using high pressure. In nature, rivers and streams always flow along a smoothly curving course. But any water supply system has multiple right angle turns. The natural structure of the water breaks down more and more with each such turn. Water from a water supply system which flows into our homes through pipes has various forms, crystals of various forms, but they are all deformed. That is, it may look like this. It can look like this or have these crystals in many other arrangements, but you won't see any symmetry or beauty. Water that flows in a floor panel heating system is devitalized and rotten. It sucks energy out of the people, plants, and animals living in that house. It actually steals the energy. It is well known that the water supply in many large cities is a closed loop system. After undergoing aggressive chemical purification and passing through powerful filters, the water in these systems is returned to our homes, still remembering the chemicals and the violence it was subjected to. Even stronger, however, is the informational pollution that the water accumulates as it flows down miles of long pipes through thousands and thousands of houses and apartments. We pollute water spiritually, and this happens on a huge scale. Why? The water adopts all of the hatred, all of the malice, the stress. The water is almost dead by the time it enters our body. Science most likely will never find out the exact process by which Adam was created, what went with what and in what proportions. But the Quran, for example, says that water played a part in this by the will of God. I think, I think that scientists should look more closely at how water interacts with their molecules. At a molecular level, it creates the structure of DNA we wouldn't have the DNA helix without water. It creates the structure of proteins, so our bodies wouldn't work um, without the water. Fish were introduced into water that had been treated in this way, and the fish soon produced an unusual hatch of small fry. They differed radically from other fish to which they were related, though they looked as much alike as twins. Gray stripes appear on the belly of all these males at once, along with colored spots, which had not been observed previously. These are called phenotype changes, and it is of fundamental importance that these changes appear not just in some of the treated fish, but in all of them at the same time. And these phenotype changes that we caused are not a hypothesis, they occurred in practice. 
всех сразу. The experiment resulted in changes not only in the outward appearance of the fish, but also in their behavior. They began to react to outside stimuli in the same way. It was as if the whole school had acquired a collective mind. A whole important area of problems came up, which had not been studied whatsoever. Therefore, it was decided that it would suffice to establish even just the fact that behavior could change the form of animals using only water, which fact, in and of itself, is very significant. If water has such a strong effect, that is, we shouldn't make it public without thoroughly studying this. In 1932, sensational news traveled around the world. The American physicists Harold Urey and Albert Osborne had discovered that, in addition to ordinary water, heavy water also exists in nature. Deuterium 2O. The splitting of deuterium was the basis for creation of the most destructive bomb, the hydrogen bomb. Now everybody knows very well what radioactive radiation can cause, but it turns out that there are other even more awesome effects. Rather more horrific is the change in the structure of water, covering huge areas, thousands of miles larger than the nuclear weapons testing grounds. It made no difference where the test was carried out, in the atmosphere, on the ground, or underground. Colossal changes occur in the water and the water's memory changes, and people drink that water, animals drink it, and suddenly terrible changes take place. When the explosion occurs, waves are formed, which die out fairly quickly in the ground, but the water may continue to fluctuate for another 30 days. Swinging like a pendulum, the waves create a new and pathological ordering in the water. It has been noted that the number of suicides rises abruptly after such tests. By a factor of two, two and a half, three, medical experts had absolutely no explanation for this, but we could understand it. We showed the brain is made of water, about 85%. So these changes take place in the brain, and a conflict between the water structures arises. The bioplasm of the brain is disrupted, and the result is that the person is deprived even of such an extremely important incentive as the drive to live. We have two containers of emulsified crude oil, which is a byproduct of oil production, a stable combination of water and oil, which remain bound in this state for years. The test sample is irradiated the element will treat one container for seven days, making the water molecules lessen their contact with the oil molecules. After four days, we compare the test sample and the control. The water has separated from the oil. At the boundary between the water and oil phases, there are crater-like formations. This means that the separation process is continuing. Поля. The fields we use to influence the water are comparable in intensity with the electromagnetic field of the human heart. On the seventh day of treatment, the experiment is finished. The water has completely separated from the oil. Nowhere in the world is water the same. Breaking its way to the surface through minerals and ores, water assimilates the vibrations of the soil and information about its specific biological and energetic features. We tested a sample of purified municipal water, which is sold in large bottles, and the producer puts a label on them which says it is the best water in the world. But it is empty and dead. True, it's pure and it's good, and some minerals have been added, but this is dead water in which there is no energetics and there is no life. Most likely, people do not sense any particular difference between naturally pure and artificially purified water. But any animal will always choose water from a spring, because this water 
is loaded with natural energies. Not long ago, yet another unique property of natural water was discovered. It turns out that such natural water is flammable. The burning of natural water, the water itself burns, and the reason it burns is precisely that it is structured in a special way natural water is. Burning, in rigorous scientific terms, is a process of oxidation in which heat and light are given off. In the case of water, it burns at the temperature of the environment, and the light emitted can be recorded using super-sensitive instruments. In burning, you have oxygen being continuously activated, and some organic matter is continuously burning. So the burning of water is a process that happens over an extended period of time, because if it were a process that happened more quickly, then it would have already burned up all the water on Earth. Let's imagine that here we have a human being, and here we have water. This water contains many different types of information. If we introduce this water into the human body, then that human body will assimilate this information, which may change the person's characteristics. Let us see how this type of water affects human blood. The doctor is drawing blood from a patient's finger. Using a special microscope, we shall be able to see the condition of her body from this drop. These are red blood cells and they've lost their electrical charge. So they're all stuck together in a formation called a rouleau. Here's a huge symplast. Symplasts are associated with heart disease and uh, arthritis and lung disease and many other conditions that could be coming in the future. The doctor asks the patient to drink a small amount of structured water. After 12 minutes, the doctor again draws blood from the patient and studies it. So you can see that the cells then become buoyant, they become slippery, and they have their electrical charge, so they repel each other. That allows them to carry oxygen, and it means that we're changing the pH of the blood back to an aerobic environment rather than an anaerobic environment. I think that's utterly amazing. That, that a water could, that just drinking water could do that. In 1995, Dr. Masato Imoto was the first one to record musical impressions on water. In Dr. Imoto's laboratory, they presented water with different types of music, after which they froze the water and then under the microscope could clearly see the crystals that the water had formed. Here is what the music of Bach looks like. Mozart. Beethoven. Heavy rock. Dr. Emoto conducted another groundbreaking experiment. He placed rice into three glass beakers and covered it with water. And then every day for a month he said thank you to one beaker. You're an idiot to the second. And the third one he completely ignored. After one month, the rice that had been thanked began to ferment, giving off a strong, pleasant aroma.
the rice in the second beaker turned black. And the rice that was ignored began to rot. Dr. Emoto feels that this experiment provides an important lesson, especially with regard to how we treat children. We should take care of them, give them attention, and converse with them. Indifference does the greatest harm. It may not always be easy to do, and almost always it takes practice. Practical experience show that hatred, rage, and even annoyance not only exert a destructive influence on other people, but they also give feedback. Intellectually, at the level of thoughts, a person who sends negative thoughts is polluting his own water, of which his body is 75 to 90 percent composed, and giving it a negative charge. Many laboratories around the world have repeatedly carried out an experiment that produces similar results. Water from a single container was divided into two portions. One part was subjected to an outside influence that changed the structure and properties of that water. The water in the second flask acquired the same structure and the same properties after a certain period of time. Even if the two portions of water were a significant distance removed from each other. The water has a very important uh, photographic memory, we can say that, and also you can imprint it with very subtle energies, even from 10,000 kilometers. Does that mean that remote communication occurs between human beings, who are essentially structures composed of water? So therefore, our actions every day is very important. And our actions are related to nature, to the whole cosmos. So what one does doesn't just affect themselves. It affects other people, and it affects the whole universe. Organism. All of its parts, including us and our Earth, are inseparably bound together by huge streams of information. Billion people of the Earth lack access to safe drinking water. Over five million people, half of them children, die from this reason each year. This is ten times more than perish from wars each year. If this problem is left unsolved, water may become a source of international conflict in the 21st century. Already now, it is gradually attaining the status of a base resource, which is beginning to figure in the political dialogue among countries and peoples. Если спросить сегодня простого человека на улице, if you ask the ordinary man on the street today whether or not man and human activity are to blame for the increased number of hurricanes on the planet and their increased destructive force, I think that every other person will say yes. This is a consequence of human activity. Это следствие человеческой деятельности. I think that. Uh, what's happening in our world today, uh, all the uh, tsunamis and the freak weather everywhere and uh, the terrorism and the fear that is uh, gripping us, all of the things that are happening uh, is a result of unhealthy individual health. And it affects the other way too. Okay, and also I think it's, uh, it, it's a result of water being polluted. There have been many wars on religious grounds in human history, but in our experiment, water reacted to individual words that had a religious content by forming beautiful crystals. This means that the conception of our nature coincides with each religion. The Christian Prayer the Buddhist prayer, the Muslim prayer, 
Dr. Emoto presumes that serious crimes are committed most of all in areas where people curse the most often. Idiot. I hate you. Laboratory containers of water were inscribed with hieroglyphs denoting words and the names of well-known people. Love. Hope. Soul. The universe was created by the Absolute, by the Source, that produced all of which exists, all its material manifestations. Each of us has an element from the water of the primeval ocean. Our every word is like a water drop, a medium of thought, a source of information. And we are all here to repay the Absolute with love and gratitude.